House of Ed Tech, Episode 16. Hi, everybody. This is Principal Jay or Jessica Johnson, Principal at Dodgeland in Wisconsin, and you are listening to the House of Ed Tech with Christopher Nessie. The House of Ed Tech podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get your free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash House of Ed Tech. Welcome to the House of Ed Tech podcast. I am your host, Christopher Nessie. The House of Ed Tech podcast explores how technology is changing the way teachers teach and the impact that technology is having in education. My objectives include discussing technology that is changing our classrooms and schools and sharing information that you can hear about today and use tomorrow by talking to teachers, leaders, and creators like you and having them share their stories. Because whether you use it or not, technology is changing the way we teach and how our students learn. Welcome back to the House of Ed Tech, everybody. I have got to tell you, this may not be the best episode I have produced. The content is there, but I got to tell you guys, I am beat. I am tired. My wife and I just closed on our forever home this past Thursday. August, I'm sorry, not August. (laughs) That's where I'm at. Uh, We closed on our new house uh, earlier this week on July 31st. And it is the days have been running together for the last couple of days. So I apologize in advance if this episode is not up to snuff. You may want to fast forward to the different parts of it. Um, But I am beat. It's already 11.45 and uh, I'm recording this and the episode will be released tomorrow morning. So being in the new house, haven't had the internet hooked up yet. Uh, cable vision is coming on Monday and I should get hooked up. So this is actually, uh, this is the last episode that I'll be recording from the original house of ed tech studios. Um, as Jeff Bradbury pointed out to me earlier in the week in our Voxer chat, uh, I guess I'm moving into the real house of ed tech. <laughs> um, so it's just, it's really exciting. Um, but I'm tired, (laughs) but we're going to push through. In this episode, I do have fantastic content. Uh, I sat down earlier this week and I got to speak with Dr. Spike Cook, who is an elementary school principal here in New Jersey, and he had a lot of great information and a great perspective to offer. So I'm looking forward to sharing that with you. Uh, Again, due to the fact that I'm I'm whipped, basically, uh, I do not have an EdTech thought prepared for this episode. I do have an EdTech recommendation, and I did find a House of EdTech VIP. So, again, I'm sorry if this episode is shorter or it doesn't meet your expectations. Um, I tell you right now, as of me recording this, I don't know if it'll meet my expectations, but I did not want to let you down and leave you hanging and not put out an episode. So, I want to keep the streak alive. So, let's continue with episode 16. And let's get to this week's, or this episode's, featured content, my conversation with Dr. Spike Cook. I'd like to welcome on Dr. Spike Cook to the podcast. Dr. Cook is a Jersey guy through and through. He is a graduate of Eastern Regional High School in Voorhees, New Jersey. And he attended Rowan University, where he earned his bachelor's in English. He has two master's degrees, one in student personnel services and one in education administration. And he has his educational doctorate in educational leadership. He's married with two really cool kids. He is active in his community as a volunteer and a coach. He has previously taught at the elementary and middle school levels, as well as working as a guidance counselor and director of guidance. He has worked at the collegiate level as an academic advisor and director of residence life. Currently, Dr. Cook serves as the principal of R.M. Bacon Elementary School in Millville, New Jersey. He also, if this wasn't enough, he co-hosts the Principal Cast podcast, which can be heard on the TeacherCast.net website. And he joins me now as previous hosts, Jessica Johnson and Teresa Steger have. Welcome to the House of Ed Tech, Dr. Spike Cook. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Look forward to uh, spending some time with you today. It's going to be fantastic. As I as as my listeners know, 
I'm a big fan of the Principal Cast podcast, so I've been following you and listening to everything that you're doing since basically December of 2013. And first, I think you guys do a great job over there on the podcast. And I'm looking forward to a fantastic conversation about everything that you do. Yeah, thank you so much. You've done a, an awesome job of putting together some really cool graphics for us. And, um, you know, we're, we're really uh, appreciative of all the support that you have uh, given us. It, it's been my pleasure. I, I, I love graphic design. And whenever I get the opportunity, I love to be creative and, and you know, help people out and give them my best. Uh, it shows. My favorite one was uh, where you had the three of us. It was like the um, Three's Company um, one where it was you, you kind of taken our faces and, you know, put, superimposed them over. Yeah, the, we got to use that on the actual podcast, though. You got to you got to get Jeff on that. Yeah, I, I, I think we I, I don't know what the ladies thought of that one, but uh, I, I liked it. I thought it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was that was a lot of fun to make too. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's uh let's let's enough about me. Let's let's talk more about you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> tell me how how you became interested and and got a career in education. Okay. Um, I didn't plan to go into education. Um, when I was in high school, I really had no idea what I wanted to do with myself. Um, and. Uh, I just was very unfocused, and um, so I ended up going to college just because everybody else did, uh, but I didn't even get accepted regular admittance. I had to go through a summer program in order to get accepted to uh, what is now Rowan University, it used to be Glassboro State, and uh, I was a psychology major, and that didn't work out so well, and then I became an English major, but none of it was ever through education, so... Uh, as I went through my experiences there, I uh, I ended up working the summer program that I had gone through as the EOF program, and uh, I really I really got interested in you know like in like counseling, helping, teaching, um, advising you know, through the the summer program. So that's what kind of got me into the road of education, and then. Um, but I, I never thought of K-12. I always thought of myself more as a higher ed guy. So I took, um, I, I stayed at Rowan and I did my first master's in, uh, in counseling. Uh, and then I worked in higher ed for a year, just doing, you know, doing academic advising and I did some admissions work. And I, I just really wasn't, I, I, it wasn't really what I thought it was. So, uh, you know, one day I just woke up and I was like, I, I want to be a teacher, you know, and my wife, um, that was always what her goal was. So I ended up going through the alternate route and uh, I taught for a couple of years. Then I got into guidance counseling and then just kind of went from there. Very cool. Now, obviously, since you've worked as a classroom teacher, at some point you also woke up and said, I want to be an administrator. Yeah. How did, how did that happen? It, you know, when I, I was in, I was a guidance counselor um, uh, for about a year or two, and the principal that I worked for, um, I guess saw something in me and really encouraged me to go back to to get my master's in school administration. And that was one of the last things that I wanted to do. You know, I, I, I just couldn't see myself working all day and then taking classes at night. And, and I knew I had a couple of colleagues that were doing that. And I just thought it was the, you know, the, the hardest thing to do. But this this is you know, before I had kids too. So I was trying to enjoy myself, you know, and exercising and, you know, just, you know, doing whatever it is that I wanted to do. Uh, I was coaching at the time. So, uh, I finally, um, you know, buckled down and decided to, to go back. And, um, I actually, I started my first master's class in my, uh, for school administration the day that my son was born. So I guess that was 10 years ago. And, uh, well, I, I missed my first class actually because my son was born, but he, you know, uh, they were both scheduled at the same time. So, uh, went through the master's program and, and then, um, where I was working, um, uh, they were very, you know, happy with the things that I was doing and I was able to start a, a summer program and they gave me, gave me a lot of different leadership opportunities. 
And then uh, once I got done with my master's, I said, you know, I might as well just finish it and get a doctorate. It's something that I had always wanted to do. So I just, you know, continued to uh, move forward and, uh, and eventually earn my doctorate. Well, the doctorate is amazing because, I mean, from being on Twitter and you see all the people who are out there who are, you know, getting bestowed their, their doctorate, their doctor title. Um, I just finished my master's. So one, I can't see myself going back and getting a second one and you have two. Right. <laughs> um, and, and, I, and I'm sure your, your teacher at that time letting the son be born was, that was, that was a valid excuse, right? I think so. But you know what? I ended up getting an A minus in that class. And one of the things they said was, uh, attendance. And that was the only class that I missed. And I was like, Oh, I thought you, you know, I thought you guys understood that my son was born and, I never fought it, but I, I just thought, oh, I couldn't believe that. I'm sure it's something that has impacted you going forward when kids come to you with their sob stories. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. We're teachers now. I mean, since I deal with teachers primarily, um, you know, and I try to be very, you know, family oriented. Uh, but yeah, there are quite a lot of uh, sob stories. <laughs> now, now, the whole reason we're here on the House of EdTech is to talk about technology. Now, mm -hmm. How have you been able to utilize technology in your career? What are some things that you did as a teacher? And now what are some ways that you utilize technology in admin? Well, as a teacher, I, I didn't use much technology at all. I mean, I was teaching in, um, and it doesn't sound, I mean, it sounds like the dark ages now, but it was like only in 2000, to, you know, 2003. And, um, you know, honestly, you know, thinking back, I didn't use much technology at all. Um, and I was a very like sort of traditional teacher in the sense um, of, of delivery. Although for some reason, I always, I've always been trying to be like an out of the box thinker. So I remember being really interested in uh, the show Survivor. So I ended up um, redesigning, with, I was a teaching a, a careers class like uh, teaching kids about different careers and stuff. And, and it was it was very dry, and I didn't really know how to spruce it up. So I ended up, um, I loved the show Survivor at the time. So I, I took the ideas from that and, and basically got kids into teams, and they had challenges each week that required them to work together and work collaboratively. We did a lot of the outside-the-box thinking and uh, lateral thinking and, just to kind of get them, you know, um, you know, into the, the whole idea of, you know, working with others is no matter what career you're going to do, working with others is going to be important. Um, when I was then, when I transitioned into guidance, I started to, you know, just kind of like when I would make presentations and stuff, I would use like, you know, PowerPoint and stuff like that. And I remember, um, I had to, I had to teach uh, kids as well a little bit about like careers and, and whatnot. And I, um, I, I remember coming across the, the I, I guess it was uh, the presentation put together by um, The Shift Happens. Um, and uh, I remember being really blown away by that, you know, because that, um, that was probably like in the late 2000s. That I came across that, and I was, um, I was showing it to seventh and eighth grade kids, and it was really interesting because even the teachers at the time really hadn't heard much about that, and um, and it really made me think. But I just, I just didn't. I was never really a techie kind of person, so I didn't. I still didn't make the connection to what they were talking about. I just knew that we were preparing kids for jobs that didn't exist. That was like my big takeaway from that, and. Um, you know, eventually I've, I got a chance to, to talk with and interview uh, Scott McLeod, who, you know, was very instrumental in getting that out there. But, um, you know, so I started to, to try, you know, little little things here and there. Um, but I'll, I'll tell you what, like even, you know, through my, ma uh, through my doctorate program, I didn't use technology much. And even in the first couple months of being a principal, um, I didn't, I still didn't understand it. I was always um, of the volition that social media was not a good thing. And I really, um, I really, I just really held off on, on a lot of technology. So it wasn't until it was my first year as, as a principal, I was taking karate 
one of my uh, karate sensei uh, was talking with me about the different ways that he uses technology and social media. And I kept telling him, this was like three months, we had this three month long discussion. And I basically told him that you really can't do that in education. And he sort of laughed at me. He's like, well, have you even looked? Like, have you ever seen people, you know, out there, you know, on Facebook and Twitter? And I'm like, what is he talking about? You know, like, I didn't, never thought educators would be there. So in January of 2012 is when I first decided, like, okay, this really makes sense. I did my research and then it just went from there. That's that's fantastic. And I think you might be the first person who got on social media because of karate. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I, I know. I don't hear I, I certainly don't hear a lot of that. Um, and, and, you know, it's funny. I mean, people that I had known, like even in education, they were utilizing social media, but not for education. You know, like people were on Facebook and MySpace and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but that was always like for the personal reasons. And, you know, I've written a lot about this because I think like in the mid 2000s and even to the late uh, 2000, like before 2010, like the, a lot of the superintendents and, and principals at the time were very anti-social media. So it, they almost like they'd have these workshop, not workshops, but, you know, presentations and stuff where, you know, they would basically make you feel like you should never go on these things. They were like the devil's playground and, you know, you're going to get arrested. You're going to get in trouble. And I mean, I'm telling you, they really hit you over the hammer with this like anti-social media message. Um, and it's a shame because what we've done by, by doing that is, We've created a whole generation of kids that they had no, you know, no one was talking with them about it. It was like the Wild West, you know, and no wonder they were, you know, taking all these, you know, inappropriate pictures and videos and stuff because no one had ever talked with them about it. So I, I feel really bad because I, I can remember even, you know, as the guidance counselor working with kids and just telling them like, you know, when they would ask questions about Facebook or MySpace at the time, um, you know, I, I, I just gave the party line like that they shouldn't be on there, that that was not good. And, you know, I, I really feel like uh, even I was a part of that, you know, creating a generation where they just thought, OK, well, at least the teachers and stuff aren't on there so they can go on and do whatever they want. Yeah. Um, and it's funny they say that. I mean, it, it comes down to digital citizenship. And that's something that we should be maybe 10 to 12 years into having already infused into our curriculums. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think there, we were at a point where, um, you know, if we were listening to the right people, we would have known, you know, even back then, um, you know, that, that this was okay and that this was an area that we could have utilized. So, um, you know, so I, I think the signs were always there for me, but I, it really didn't make sense until, you know, like I said, ironically, I was taking karate and the sensei talked a lot about it and then, you know, and then once I started, my whole world opened up and I can remember even doing a, a blog post about, you know, that I was like a, a 38 year old first year dinosaur principal, you know, that once I learned everything that was out there, I, I just was, I'm like, I'm a dinosaur, you know, so I, I had a lot to learn. And, and learn you have, because <laughs> now you're doing some, some amazing things on social media and, and again with the podcast. Um to continue with my the, the theme of my summer shows is uh, Summertime Fun PD. What are some of your favorite tools and what are you learning this summer as an educator? Yeah, um, so some of the things that I've gotten into have, have really you know, helped me to grow. Um, and, I, and I would definitely say that Twitter has been a huge uh, help in that, in that regard because, um, you know, I just... I just understand that, you know, at any time that I want to either be inspired, um, challenged, or make a connection, that I can just go on to Twitter and either follow hashtags or follow, you know, the folks that I've been connecting with over the last two years and really be able to learn. Um, so the summertime, you know, I, I, I mean, I, and I do that on a regular basis, you know, but the summertime, you know, I do have a little bit more downtime. So, um, I have part, I have been participating in a, in a Voxer chat. 
uh, link with the principal cast. So uh, the folks on there who uh, it's, it's really cool because these are folks that have been, you know, listening to the show or, you know, or or just looking to get into Voxer have been able to, you know, provide me with different TED Talks uh, that I've been viewing and prep and preparing for, you know, what would be a cool welcome back, you know, for teachers. Um, I've, I've been doing a lot of research this, uh, summer on Genius Hour and of, and of, um, plans for this year to help out my teachers with, um, creating time for them to create their own Genius Hour, not only in their classrooms, but first for themselves. Um, I've been, um, I've been writing, um, so I've been doing a lot of research and um, focusing on the whole concept of isolation and leadership and how social media helps that. And um, and then, you know, just through uh, reading articles and, and, and blog posts have really helped me to, you know, to, to stay inspired. I mean, there, there's a lot of cool things out there. Uh, that are that are really helping me to like either validate the in the direction that I'm going or inspire me to to take it up a level. You know, um, the principal cast, you know, doing the podcast every Sunday really helps out too because I can, you know, I, I get you know 45 minutes to an hour just to learn from people who are doing really really cool things. You know, and and I always look at myself as a learner. I model that, so I. Um, I love to ask a lot of questions, you know, so it's, um, you know, participating in, in all these venues over the summer. Uh, it, it's amazing. You are a very busy man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. Uh, you know, sometimes people ask me like, you know, how do you do it all? And, you know, um, and I'm probably not a good model for people who are looking to get interested or to start to put their toe in the water because I have, like, I just do everything all the time, you know what I mean? And you don't have to, you know, I've, I've talked a lot about this, um, you know, either in my blog or, or, um, in the book that I wrote, um, about how really, you know, if you just did like 10 minutes a day, you know, three days a week uh, of, of going on, like say Twitter and, and interacting with others and reading some, um, some cool blog posts or some ideas about, you know, redesigning your classroom or your office or maybe watch a TED talk like that. You'd, you'd be re- you'd be far ahead of everybody else. So then when they ask me what I do, it's like, oh, uh, you know, I well, I do, you know, and then I just list all the things that I do and it just seems unachievable. But um, but it's not. I mean, I, I think it's like a, you know, it's that snowball you know theory that, you know, as it goes down the hill, you just kind of pick up more speed, more momentum. And, um, you know, considering the fact that I just read somewhere that, you know, 90% of the world's, you know, information was created in the last two years, um, there's, there's quite a, a fire hydrant of information that's out there. So for somebody who I felt like was in the dark for so long, I am maybe, you know, over, you know, overcompensating for that. And, um, but I, I don't look at it as work. That's the, that's the fun thing. Like, like when I blog or when I do a podcast or, um, you know, or, or learn new information, I don't look at it as work. And I think that's important because if it did, if it did, if it was like burning me out or if it was dragging me down, I certainly wouldn't do it. So I do it you know, on my own time and, and I'm trying to model that, you know, that, you know, for my teachers and for my students, you know, how to be a, a solid, you know, appropriate digital leader or a digital citizen, you know, in, in the 21st century. Absolutely. And I, and I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, all, all the things that you do and I'm in the same boat, it, it, it's none of it is work, you know, to, to sit at the computer and, you know, whether I'm watching a baseball game and, you know, I'm multitasking, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm cruising the internet. I'm reading articles. I'm finding links, you know, so I'm right there with you on that. Now you've mentioned a couple of times that you blog and I do follow your blog. Can you talk a little bit about what you've undertaken here in 2014 on your blog? Yeah, I, um, uh, uh, 
of course, I can't do anything that's just, you know, normal like everyone else and just blog when you get inspired or maybe do a weekly blog or sometimes some people even do a monthly blog. Um, I decided that um, beginning in 2014 that I wanted to blog every day. And the inspiration for that came from a conversation that I had. Um, I don't know if it was last summer or the summer before when I met with Kelly Tankley uh, through. I did these challenges the last two summers where I wanted to connect with people in a different way than just through Twitter or um, reading their blogs or something like that. So so I went through and I just interviewed people who I thought were really cool and then I blogged about it. And uh, so she was one of them. And it, it's actually funny because that was like sort of the beginning of like you know, utilizing Skype, uh, that which I was using at the time, or Google Hangouts too. That was like the beginning of my you know, interest in, in interviewing and, and learning from others. And that's more of a conversational piece. And, um, you know, in, in one of the conversations that I had with Kelly, you know, she told me that she had blogged every day for four years. And I thought, wow, that, that's really cool, you know. And she was blogging about, you know, things to make your classroom better, you know. And I just didn't make that connection, like how I could do that because my, my, my blog has always been focused on insights into learning. So what am I learning? What can I help others learn? And, um, and it's a lot of leadership. So, uh, this, this year, I don't know. It, it was sort of a New Year's resolution, but I just figured, you know, this will be something that'll keep me writing. Um, I'm really, uh, enamored by the, um, Seth Godin, who, um, who wrote Lynchpin and he, he's a prolific blogger and, um, he puts out something every day. So I just started thinking about it. I'm like, well, you know, if I, if I want to increase my, uh, my writing capacity and my ability to, you know, read something and then help others find out about it, this would be a great opportunity. So, uh, it's been, it's been really fun. I mean, I'm just looking at my blog now and we're 210 days into, into the year. So I know that I have, you know, I, I, I know that I still have a long way to go. But it, but once again, it hasn't been a lot of work. So I'm blogging about everything from what I'm reading, ideas that I have, ideas that other people have. And, um, there's never been a time where I sat there and thought, oh, what am I going to blog about? Or, or it was some sort of, ch um, you know, it, it was, you know, it was a, a chore. I, I don't look at it like that. Cause if I did, I wouldn't do it. Just like I've said earlier, I wouldn't do this stuff if I thought it was a chore. So it's really just helped me. You know, as a writer, it's, and it's helped me as, you know, as a leader to, you know, to continue to put information out there, uh, information that I've learned or information that I've, you know, sort of came across or thought of myself, you know, and it's, uh, you know, I, it, it does, it, you know, it does well and it's, um, hopefully helpful, you know, to other people. It's, it's another avenue. I mean, I, I also run a school blog, uh, which I continue to keep up over the summer. Because I really think it's important for, you know, teachers and, and students and, you know, community members to see that, you know, the, the school doesn't stop, you know, uh, when we let out in June and then just start up in September. That it's a year-long process. So I'm constantly taking pictures of the different projects that we're doing. I'm uh, talking with my, you know, head custodian about progress that we're making, you know, and, um, you know, so I like to put that stuff out on the blog, you know, so for people to see, you know, that things are still going on here. And, and, and they should be, I mean, it, it principalship is a 12 month position. It's, uh, it's, it, it's, uh, it's a process. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, I, I firmly believe that because, you know, I, I subscribe to the, the notion of like what Eric Scheninger says about, you know, be the storyteller in chief of your school. Um, you know, for me, I, I've always thought, well, the story doesn't end in the summer. In fact, for many purposes, the story begins in the summer, you know, like, what are we doing? What are we changing? You know, and, you know, I, I just feel bad for, you know, some of the folks who might be, you know, running schools where, you know, not a whole lot changes. Like for me, I don't, I don't, that's not the way I operate. So even if it's ever anything from, you know, documenting classroom moves or, you know, we're, we have some new uh, smart boards that are going in this summer or, 
you know, redesigning our arrival and dismissal, all, all this stuff I document, all the stuff I, um, you know, make sure that others are seeing exactly what's going on. This year, I also started to encourage our staff to send me pictures of them on uh, their summer vacation or just cool things that they're doing, because that's the other thing that we want to tell, too. Like our, our, our overall theme here is, you know, then now always family. So we tr- we say that we're a family school. Well, what do families do in the summertime? Are they going on vacation? You know, so that's why I wanted um, the staff to to help out and send pictures of, you know, if they go on a whitewater rafting trip or a new dog that they have or something like that, just to show, you know, our community that we have, you know, that we are people too, and here are the things that we're doing during the summer. Well, absolutely. And as, as an elementary school, a, a lot of the students, you know, they might think the teachers live in the school all the time and, you know, they're always there. So it, it says something and tells the story to the students as well. Yeah, they think that I live here, too. And I, and I try to uh, encourage that. I tell them that, that I live in the basement, that I have a little apartment down there. Um, <laughs> and the funny thing is, like, they will, you know, sort of laugh at that. But you know, some of them are still thinking to themselves, like, hmm, does he really live there? Because his car is always there. And <laughs> There's I mean, only one principal who I think really lives at her school, and that's the only place you ever see her. Yeah. Who's that? Uh, Miss Johnson. Oh, yeah? That's <laughs> right. That's true. She is there. She's there a lot. Well, she also lives like two minutes away. See, for me, um, I live 40 minutes away. And I am, uh, yeah, I just, I have a lot going on. So during the year, you know, much as chagrin of my, my wife, um, you know, sometimes I won't be getting out of here till six, six thirty, seven o'clock. Um, and I'm usually here around eight o'clock. So I put in long hours and, um, you know, but I think that's important because, you know, during the day when the kids are here from, you know, eight fifty to, to three fifty. You know, I feel like I have to be as, as accessible as possible. So that's when I, you know, after school or before school is when I try to deal with all the other things, you know, that are going on. Nice. And and actually a point you made about what goes on in the summer reminds me when I when I had Teresa on the show, she I interviewed her the day after school ended for her. And okay. I made a joke like, oh, so you'll be back in your office on Monday. And then she with a straight face said, yeah, I'll be back in the, back in the office on Monday. And, you know, I'm preparing for all these things for next year. So it seems like the school year abruptly ends, but then right away you begin almost like football, you know, it's like, you know, training camp and, you know, you're just constantly, you're just ready to prep for that next season almost. Yeah. And it, and it's probably not healthy. You know, it's, there's, <laughs> pro- it's, there's probably a lot of downsides to it. Um, but you know, like I, I do get texts from people, friends and stuff like that, that they'll just be like, listen, Spike, are you going to take a break? Like, are you going to like, like take some time for yourself or whatever? But the the funny thing is that like, I don't see, I don't really focus a lot of that on my, in social media. So they're kind of getting a, like, like, and I, I understand where they're coming from. They're kind of getting a lopsided view of that, like where they may think, you know, oh, geez, so he's blogging every day. Honestly, it takes me about 10 minutes. Uh, he's tweeting all the time. Well, as you know, Chris, it, it, you could be on there for 10 minutes and, and retweet 27 things, and, and people would think that, you know, it, you're all consumed by it. Um, I thumb through Facebook all the time because I love seeing, like, what other people are doing, not just my friends, but also, like, uh, you know, my, my, my PLN, my, my, professional learning network and my personal learning network. So, um, but I, I do that at, at downtime, you know, like today, like after work, I will be going and playing, uh, tennis with, uh, a few buddies that I've known since I've been in grade school. Um, yesterday, you know, I was playing basketball with my son and, you know, I w- went out to dinner with the family. Um, you know, I mow the grass. I do, I, I work out. I do a lot of things that I don't necessarily, that won't necessarily show up on my digital profile. And that's okay, because that's that's a little bit by choice. So the thing is that, like I said, I just feel like some people get like a lopsided view of, of what, the, you know, what the life of a principal is like, or a connected leader or something like that. And, uh, you know, and, and the reality is that 
I'm probably not on there as much as people think. Right. And then, you know, like myself included, nobody wants to know on this podcast that, you know, I spent the last two days under the counter redoing plumbing in a house. I mean, I'm doing yeah. it. <laughs> and you did a heck of a good job. I, I liked you. I, you sent me some pictures and they were, they were pretty cool. Well, that that was my uh, my wife's aunt's house, but now I'm doing some plumbing here uh, for my mother in law. Um, so that's what I'm that's what I'm doing when I get off this call. I got to finish up that project, but that doesn't show up on my website or anything. Exactly, like that. <laughs> and, and it's funny too because then I look at myself, right? And then there's people that I admire, you know. And I, like I was thinking about this the other day, I was looking at some people, like just the amount of tweets that they've done, right? So in in two years, I'm. I'm, I'm about 9,500 tweets. And there's some people who have, you know, within two years may have like 50,000 tweets, right? So I look at them and I'm like, wow, look at all the stuff that they're doing, you know? And, and I'm certainly nowhere near that. And yet there's people who look at me and like, I couldn't believe that he would be tweeting so much, you know, like he, almost 10,000 tweets, like, oh my goodness, you know, like, but like I said, t- to me, that's like a drop in the bucket you know, of uh, the amount of uh, participation that, that some people have. So it's, it's a spectrum. And then there's times where I have high levels of en- engagement. And there's other times where I do have low levels of engagement. Like I go on vacation every year. Um, I do not do much at all. Like this year, I'll probably, since I'm doing that blog challenge, I'll, I'll you know, I'll queue up, you know, six or seven blogs and make sure that they come out. And then that's it, you know, like I, I just, I like, you know, being in the sand and in the, in the water and, you know, playing with my kids and my nephews and nieces and, you know, and and I don't do a lot, you know, um, but there, and there are times too, where like even during the school year where I'll have, you know, low, lower levels of, of engagement. Um, and, and I think that's okay. You know, but it's, it's, it's all relative, you know, and I, so I think technology, you know, and, and all these tools, you know, they're, they're really as good as, as you, as you make them. And also they're, since they're so readily available, it's like you can just pick them up and put them down whenever you choose to. Yeah. Th- thank God for buffer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, you know, it's funny. I don't, I don't use buffer. Well, that's why you don't have 50,000 tweets. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Hey, yeah. I, I, um, I'm pretty organic in that sense. And I, and I've, you know, I've gone back and forth on, on that, but, um, yeah, I, I do, I, I do all my own tweeting and, uh, it's funny. Like the other night I woke up, we were having a bad storm. My dog woke me up and stuff. And it was one of those nights I couldn't get back to sleep. And I just looked at my Twitter feed just, just out of curiosity. And you're right. Like I saw people who were tweeting at two, three in the morning. I'm like, I know that they're not up right now. You know, it's like the, you know, the buffer thing. And, um, but the cool thing is that there's people in Australia that are. You know, and I'll tell you what, my feed, because I do follow a lot of people from Australia, um, my feed was filled with people, you know, in the, you know, two, three in the morning, which for them, I don't know what time it is, but it's probably like their, their peak productivity time. And, you know, so there, I don't see anything wrong with a, a buffer like that because I think it, it, like I said, it allows you to connect with other people, you know, at different times. It, it almost makes you wonder how much information we don't see because we actually have to sleep. <laughs> right, right. Well, <laughs> that's a great, yeah, that's a great point. Or, you know, you just think about like how much information you just miss, you know, um, because I, I've seen these things before, like the life of a tweet, you know, it, it's, it's not very long and, you know, but if you ever want to just understand that, you know, if, if you have, like, if you're at your desktop or, a laptop and you're working and you keep Twitter up, you know, it'll tell you before, you know, you refresh it, just how many new tweets just from your followers. And then, you know, you could take that information, you know, you could say like, wow, like within an hour, you're probably, you're going to see hundreds, if not thousands of tweets. Like there's no possible way that you're going to keep up with all that. Um, and that's okay. You know, I, I think, um, you know, because the, you you have there, there's a line that you you have to draw, and then eventually, if it's really important, what will happen is I I just think in the power of your PLN, like if you're gonna miss it, but somebody else catches it, and then they send it around, it, it'll get around. Yeah, the the good things come back around, and then you you have no choice but it'll get back in your face. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. And sometimes it's stuff that you know that either you've written or or or, or put out there, and it's, and that's that's pretty cool too. Because you're like, I didn't realize that anyone saw that, you know. All right, let's move on to something I'm borrowing from your very own podcast. We're gonna play a little word say asso- word association, if that's okay with you. Oh, that's fine. We didn't invent that either, so. <laughs> Well, I, I give you guys credit every time I steal it. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, here and you can let's play Jersey style. Okay. <laughs> all right, here we go. Teachers. Thoughtful. Okay. Administrators. Hmm. Oh, it's so easier to be on the other side, I'll tell you. <laughs> uh, say it again. Administrators. Oh, administrators. Okay. Um, leaders. Okay. Technology integration. Needed. That'll definitely go against what I'm going to use next. Testing. <laughs> Uh, uh, testing, um, mythology. I was thinking I was going to get the Eric Scheninger, like grunting sounds, but (laughs) that's a good save there. (laughs) All right. Two more. And because I I didn't do it with Jessica, but I did do it with Teresa. So I'm going to come back at you since you complete the trifecta. Jessica Johnson. Awesome. I agree. <laughs> and finally, Teresa Steger. I, I want to use more than one word. That's the problem. Um, All right, I'll give you a pass. Go ahead. Kindred spirit. I'd agree because you guys do again. If I, I, I can't plug the principal cast enough because uh-huh. again, I'm there every Sunday. Well, most uh, thanks. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't quite know what it is, and it's so funny because like Jessica, like I always call her like my Twitter mom and all that. Stuff. She hates that, <laughs> um, but I, I will say that we've sort of gotten beyond that. Like we're you know we're we're much more of the colleagues than of me looking at her as like you know the the one of the people who helped me to, to grow. Um, but yeah, it's funny, like doing, doing a show with them and, and, uh, you know, and, and boxing with them all the time. Like I've, I've learned so much about them and we get along so well that, um, they, both of them are like, like kindred spirits. Like they're just, they're just really awesome people. And, um, you know, it's, it's really good. It's very helpful and therapeutic for me, you know, to talk with them and to have, um, you know, to, to go over, you know, just information, decisions and things like that. So I'm glad that that comes through, you know, on the show because we, we, um, we really do, um, work well together. I think it's, it's, it's a fantastic dynamic that that's why I always encourage people to tune in. And, and for me, like, like you say, you know, like Jessica was like your Twitter mom for, for you guys to me, it's not like, I don't see you guys as my parents cause we're kind of in the same demographic. I see you guys more as like my, my big brothers and sisters. Mm, okay. Yeah. That's yeah. And, and I think it's really cool. Like, you know what you're doing because you know, you're, you're, you know, you're, you're out there, you're, you're learning and you're, you're uh, podcasting and, you know, doing your blogs and stuff like that. And it's, it's really cool. You know, I think, um, you know, I, I think it, it kind of, you know, goes both ways though. You know, like I, I get inspired by, by that that kind of stuff where you know you, you say like hey you know I really like the stuff that you're doing and I you know here are some of the things that I'm doing and I, and I just think it's I think it's awesome you know and uh, you know and and I can only imagine you know how much you've grown you know since since getting involved in all this it, it, it's been phenomenal because and and I've said this a couple times already you know, the whole reason I'm sitting behind a microphone right now is because I got tired of retweeting other people's creations. I wanted to be the creator, not mm-hmm. a curator. So that, that's why I sit here now every two weeks. <laughs> yeah, that's great. So, and, and how do you like it? How do you like this, this medium? 
I, I think it's fantastic. It, it was a little tough at first when I was literally talking to nobody, but now when I when when I have the guests and then when I do the different segments, you know, I feel like I am actually talking to people because I've started to get feedback and you know the response. I'm, I'm getting a response from people on Twitter, and you know, there's been a couple of reviews in iTunes, so I know there are people who hear my voice and. You know, that it, it, I feel validated. Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, I, I listen to a lot of podcasts and I think that, um, you know, I think it's important, you know, and I, and I, I do look at, you know, some of those brave souls who, who go at it alone, you know, because it's not like a radio station. You don't have like, you know, the bells and whistles or, you know, I guess you, you could do breaks, but, you know. Um, I would love bells and whistles. <laughs> yeah, right. But it's... uh you know, I think it's it's really uh, I think this format really you know is designed for you know for people to um, like you said share out you know some of their learning and then when you start bringing other people on and and um, I'm sure you know that you go through this a lot where you know you just you find somebody that interests you and you just kind of contact them and and say hey do you want to come on and you know talk about this or you know talk about that and uh, you know, I would say 99% of the time, you know, er everyone is, uh, you know, interested in sh sharing their information with you or sharing their stories with you. And, uh, you know, because it's, it, it's a really, it's a really cool opportunity, you know? Well, that, well, that's what I like about it. When I'm in the classroom, I, you know, I, I don't run a lecture style classroom because as I tell kids, you know, I don't want to hear me for 45 minutes. So I know you guys don't either. So, so that's why I'm always happy to, I, I want to bring on guests because, Sure, I, I could talk for an hour about education, but you know, I'm not the be all and end all. So that's why I want people to share their stories, which is why I'm so glad that I got to have you on. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, and one of the th uh, we've done a couple podcasts here, you know, with the kids. I think we've done like two or three, um, but it's it's something that I really want to get more involved with um, this year is is having kids to do, you know, some different um, work on on podcasting. So. Um, because I think it's, it, it's really cool for them to kind of, you know, mark their, their growth and their understanding of information. Oh, without a doubt. So I, I will be looking forward to seeing what comes out of RM Bacon, you know, this September. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Now, before I let you go, what are some of the ways that now people can connect with you? Okay. So, um, my, well, I, I think probably the easiest way is, is on Twitter. I'm at Dr. Spike Cook. Um, my blog is drspikecook.com. Uh, my, that's my personal blog. My school blog is, uh, rmbaconweekly.blogspot.com. I'm sorry, dot blogspot.com. Um, another, um, avenue, um, is, uh, you know, I have a book that's coming out in, um, September, uh, which I'm really excited about. That's called Connected Leadership. Uh, it's a click away. And that you can get through um, Corwin uh, Publishing. And um, if you go on to, uh, they have a they have a site now because there's a bunch of uh, books that are coming out. They're connected leader, leaders series. And um, so if you go to Corwin and you go, um, you, know, you can go through there. Just you know, search uh, connected leadership and. Um, so that right now is in, um, you know, pre-sale. And then, um, you know, once it comes out, I'm really interested to see how people are going to, you know, connect with it or, or learn from it. Um, you know, it's a, it's a book that can be, you know, utilized for people who are connected, you know, to kind of see some of the vignettes and the stories of people that they, they probably connect with on Twitter. And then also for those people who aren't connected, who are a little bit, unsure of why they would even get involved in this and it, um, it, it kind of spells out things pretty pretty uh, honestly and and hopefully pretty succinctly um, that they they could read it within an hour hour and a half and uh, and be able to put things right into practice uh, also love for you know people to check out the principal cast podcast uh, that's generally every Sunday night um, in the summertime we start at 8 15. But um, they could follow at Principal Cast on Twitter to find out any information about that. Fantastic! Congratulations on the book. I had not, I, I was not aware of that. So maybe we'll have to book you when you do the book tour come the fall. 
Yeah, that would be great. I, I'd, I'd love to do that because I'm hoping to, um, you know, once the book comes out and, um, you know, to start some different uh, discussion groups, you know, centered around that to, to really, you know, to help other people, you know, become more connected, and especially, like I said, it's designed for the school leader. Um, so I'm hoping, you know, that, that that's something that will uh, to start to grow because there's a lot of school leaders right now who are very hesitant about getting involved in all this and they don't really see the benefits that it can bring to your school, um, your staff, and your, your own personal uh, growth. So that's something that I really want to help others focus on. Fantastic work, Dr. Cook. Thank you so much for being on the House of EdTech. Great. Thanks so much for having me. And now let's jump into this episode's EdTech recommendation. I found a great article on Lifehacker earlier in the week titled, How to Use the Infinite Number of Email Addresses That Gmail Gives You. There's a link to this article in the show notes, but here are the highlights. One trick you may or may not know about Gmail is that you can add in periods anywhere in in the front part of your address, and it makes no difference whatsoever. For example, john.smith at gmail.com works just the same as johnsmith at gmail.com if John Smith was your original ID. What's even cooler is you can add a plus sign and any word before the at sign. For example, John Smith plus hello at gmail.com, and all the messages will still reach you. Why do I share this with you? Here are a few ways that you can make use of this really cool Gmail feature. Uh, number one, when you sign up for newsletters, you can use an address like John Smith plus news at gmail.com. That way you can filter out everything sent to this address to a lower priority label or folder in your Gmail inbox. Number two, you can give people you know VIP status. Try handing out an alternate email address, such as john.smith at gmail.com, to your nearest and dearest to help them stand out from all of the other emails that usually fill up your inbox. And you can also set up a filter or the star system to mark these messages as important and make them a top priority. Number three, Dividing work life from personal life. Now, this may not be useful if you're a teacher, but let's say you're using your work email for personal use, and you may do that. Um, So what you can do is use these little address tricks to distinguish between the two. It could be as simple as adding a quote-unquote plus W to your Gmail address for any work-related emails, or if it's your teacher Gmail, maybe it's plus P, and then you can give it out as a, as a personal email address. And the last one, which I think is pretty cool, you can create a to-do list using this technology. If you set up a filter that labels every email coming into John Smith plus to do at gmail.com, then you can pull up this label as a makeshift to-do list, as well as emailing tasks when you're at the office or on your phone. You can forward emails from other accounts or even send photos to the list from wherever you happen to be. Anything that can be emailed can be added to this to-do list. And, as usual, there is no option... Well, what did I say here? (laughs) As usual, there is the option within the filter to automatically archive these messages and mark them as read so you don't have to clutter up your inbox. These are some great ideas for using Gmail aliases. But if you have some tricks and tips of your own, I'd love to hear about them. You can email your tips and tricks for Gmail to feedback at chrisnessy.com, and I will look forward to sharing those tips and tricks in a future episode. And now let's meet episode 16's House of Ed Tech VIP. This episode's VIP is Miss Amber Tiemann. Ms. Tiemann is a K-4 assistant principal in Texas, in the Wiley Independent School District. Ms. Tiemann has previously taught fourth grade, and over the course of her 12 years in education, she has also served as a Title I technology facilitator. Amber believes that, quote, 
there should be no separation between technology and subject matter, and that all subjects can be made more engaging to students if we are able to deliver it in a manner in which they want to learn. End quote. And I couldn't agree more with Amber's philosophy. She is an original planner of EdCamp Dallas, and she has previously partnered with George Kuros to create the School Admin Virtual Mentoring Project. And this endeavor has connected over 400 educators worldwide in a space that nurtures and cultivates leadership. Thank you for all you do, Amber, and congratulations. You are the House of Ed Tech VIP. And please make sure to connect with Amber on Twitter. Her handle is at 8Amber8, the number 8, Amber, A-M-B-E-R, the number 8. And also check out her website, technicallyteeman.com, and Teeman is T-E-A-M-A-N-N. Congratulations again, Amber. Well, folks, that's going to do it for this episode of the House of Ed Tech. I am Christopher Nessie. Keep the conversation going. Visit my website, mr.chrisnessie.com. You can also check out the show notes for this episode at mr.chrisnessie.com slash 2014 slash 08 slash House of Ed Tech 16 dot HTML. If you have questions or comments, I would love your feedback. Leave your comment on the show notes for this episode, or you can click the speak pipe button on my website or call the House of Ed Tech hotline at 732-903-4869. You can also use the email address for the podcast, which is feedback at chrisnessie.com, or send me a tweet. I'm Mr. Nessie on Twitter, M-R-N-E-S-I, and just use the hashtag House of Ed Tech. And I also welcome your Voxes. Hit me up on Voxer. My ID is cnessie4602. And if you enjoyed the show, please rate and review the podcast on iTunes. You may not want to base it on this episode alone, as I, uh, again, I am dying in this new house. <laughs> um, your five-star rating and your positive review, review will help keep the House of Ed Tech front and center for others to discover and enjoy. And many of you have taken the time, and lots of you are enjoying the podcast. So thank you for tuning in. Be sure to come back to the house for the next episode which I'll be releasing from my new studio, somewhere in my new house, which will be released on August 17th, 2014. And I'll be continuing the Summertime PD series. Thank you for listening. And remember, using technology isn't difficult. Just give it a try. Mm-hmm.